good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Kostya Sinolakis, and there is uh, Professor Ahmed Yalsiner, and we're co-chairing this uh, session. We would like to welcome you all and wish you to stay safe. Ahmed, do you want to say anything? Uh, I would like to uh, say that uh, the, uh, we thank organizers very much. And uh, from Turkish side, Kuney, my PhD student, she led all the surveys. She is going to present, and I leave the stage to distinguished professor Sinolakis for uh, moderating the session. Thank you. Uh, okay, Ahmed and I have a mutual admiration in the society. He's as distinguished as I am. We're going to start with uh, Nikos uh, Kalieris, and then we're going to proceed with uh, Goje Gune Dogan. And uh, one is going to talk about the, the impact on the, uh, on the Greek islands. Uh, Guinea will talk about the impact in, uh, in Turkey. So, Mr. Cali uh, Dr. Calieris, the floor is yours. Thank you for the kind introduction, Professor Legis. Okay, so the 2020 Samos Aegean tsunami is perhaps the most significant tsunami event in the Aegean Sea that we've had since the tsunami generated by the 1956 Amorgos magnitude 7.8 earthquake. The, the recent tsunami event is another wake up call um, of the threat tsunamis are posing in the area. And it's a wake up call to invest towards building more tsunami ready communities in the near future. And my presentation today is on the tsunami field observations in the Greek islands near the earthquake epicenter. Uh, a post-tsunami uh, reconnaissance team uh, from the National Observatory of Athens and the Academy of Athens uh, flew to Samos the day after the, the tsunami to identify the intensity of the tsunami in the near field mm -hmm. and also collect preliminary quantitative measurements. Um, another more extensive field survey, which was funded by the Joint Research Center that covered all Greek islands around the epicenter, was uh, done later. Uh, I would like to, to start by saying a few words about what the mission of uh, post-tsunami reconnaissance teams is. Uh, we interview eyewitnesses of the tsunami, we collect uh, pictures and videos, ideally with uh, the original timestamps that uh, give us the very important timing information of the impact, and also record the tsunami impact on coastal infrastructure and the built environment. Uh, we identify traces of uh, tsunami flow depth, run-up in inundation. If uh, these traces are not uh, readily visible, then uh, reliable eyewitnesses can help us to identify them. And last but not least, uh, we collect quantitative measurements of the key tsunami parameters, which are uh, shown in the figure on the right. Uh, these are uh, some terms that uh, me and Gune uh, will use frequently in our presentations. Uh, the two important parameters uh, that uh, uh, are mentioned uh, very frequently is uh, the run-up elevation at the limit of tsunami inundation, which is the vertical distance of this uh, maximum um, point reached on land and the shoreline, and also the inundation distance, which is the horizontal distance from the shoreline to the limit of uh, tsunami inundation inland. Uh, there's also the tsunami flow depth, which is the vertical distance from the water surface on land and the local topography and tsunami elevation, the vertical distance from the water surface to the sea level. Now, uh, moving on to uh, the results of the survey, this figure shows the maximum run-up or tsunami elevation values that were recorded in all coastal locations that we visited and uh, the values are shown with the color-coded text balloons. Uh, this uh, gives the audience an overview of the locations where tsunami elevation was the highest Apart from the north coast of Samos, uh, where the tsunami wave run-up values, the maximum wave uh, run-up values were recorded on the, in the Greek islands, there was also uh, damage from the tsunami on the southeast coast of uh, Hios Island, where boats were dragged uh, by the tsunami waves and they were deposited on the breakwater uh, in the small craft harbor of Komi. Uh, also in the town of Furni, uh, on the island bearing the same name as the town, the water level rose to the main uh, town street, um, so the, the, the water reached about 50 meters inland, which corresponds to a meter and a half of wave run-up, 
and it also flooded some stores. Uh, moving on to the island of Samos, this figure shows all the locations uh, that were surveyed on the south coast of Samos, as for example, Pythagorean, which, was, uh, which is named after the famous Greek mathematician. Uh, wave runup was about half a meter and didn't cause any substantial damage. Therefore, the focus of the survey has been on the north coast of the island, which is sitting right next to the fault responsible for the earthquake on October 30th. Uh, on the north coast of Samos, uh, there is the main town of Vathi, which was the most impacted by the tsunami, and it experienced about two, minute, two meters of uh, wave runup. There is also the town of Karlovasi on the northwest coast, which experienced similar uh, runup to Vathi. Then, once you move about six kilometers to the east, a uh, wave runup rises to three meters in Agios Nikolaos, and then drops to about 60 centimeters in Agios Kostadinos which is located just seven kilometers east of Agios Nikolaos. Wave runup uh, near the fault is very patchy and that is still a mystery to us. Uh, <clears throat> now let's take a closer look uh, to Vathi. Uh, so the town sits at the end of a long and narrow bay, um, the Bay of Vathi. So the waves slowed down on the shallower part of the bay and this gave a little bit extra time uh, for uh, people to evacuate since the, the first arrival was delayed compared to other locations on the north coast. Uh, the timeline uh, of important events in Vathi are as follows. The earthquake occurred at 1.51 p.m. local time and about 11 minutes later we issued the first tsunami warning message by the Hellenic National Tsunami Warning Center and about two uh, minutes, later, minutes later the first wave flooded the town of Vathi. Uh, and then an important development happened. Uh, the Greek civil protection uh, issued a tsunami uh, warning message, which was broadcasted to all cell phones in the area, warning people to stay away from the coast. Uh, this message seen here uh, was, uh, was received uh, about three minutes prior to the second and largest uh, flood in Vathi. According to local authorities, the message mobilized agencies to be actively engaged in evacuating the local population uh, from the waterfront, most of which have never experienced a tsunami before. Um, so early indications are encouraging and the use of this technology for future events uh, will be examined. Um, an interesting feature in the town of Athi is the presence of a, a seawall that is protected by riprap and it's covering part of the waterfront of the, the town of Athi. Um, the uh, maximum tsunami elevation reached did not overtop the seawall and thus coastal areas behind it did not flood. Um, the coastal areas that we know that have flooded are shown here with, uh, with the green lines. And um, it's only a small part next to the marina that overlaps between um, the area protected by the seawall and the, the one that was flooded. Now let's zoom in to, to this area of, uh, of the town and see some representative pictures. Uh, this first picture, the, which is from the historic library of Samos, shows is very characteristic for this part of, of the town, which experienced about a one meter of uh, flow depth during the second and largest flood. The water flow also reached high velocities, increasing the danger, which is posed to pedestrians who didn't evacuate timely. Uh, fortunately, although flow depth was significant, uh, we had no casualties from the tsunami in Vathi, which is very fortunate. Uh, the rising sea uh, flooded the central square of uh, Pythagoras and reached the square of Agios Nikolaos, seen here in the picture, which is located about 100 meters inland. Uh, inland of the, of the marina uh, in Vathi, uh, you see another picture here from the branch of the Gre uh, Bank of Greece. Again, uh, this area experienced about a meter of flow depth and in the street behind, uh, which is called Capitan Stamatis, uh, water, uh, water flow depth dropped to about half a meter, which was enough uh, to uh, flood the stores and destroy a lot of the merchandise. Uh, the last picture here shows the limit of inundation in the, in the town of Athi. This is an area located behind the seawall. Uh, eyewitnesses along this part uh, uh, described to us how water was rising through the storm drains uh, due to hydrostatic pressure. Even though the water didn't overtop the seawall, uh, 
water came through the storm drains. And stores uh, which were located near the, those drains experienced higher flow depths compared to stores that were further away. Um, now let's move on to Karlovasi in the northwest uh, part of Samos Island, uh, which is also located very close to the fault responsible for the earthquake. Uh, in this location, the shoreline retreated almost immediately after the earthquake. Uh, the left picture here shows that within three to four minutes after the earthquake, um, we have the minimum uh, water elevation reached uh, from the leading depression wave. And uh, the first flood uh, arrived in, in the harbor about eight minutes after the earthquake. In the eastern part uh, of the harbor, we can see that the flow depth was not very significant, but uh, the flow depth was enough to lift and displace this wooden structure here, which belongs to the Greek rescue team. Uh, this part of the harbor on the east experienced about 100 meters of inundation and 1.8 meters of wave runoff. Um, the last two slides that I want to show you are about the um, CCTV footage that was filmed in Ayos Nikolaos, uh, which is six kilometers uh, east of Karlovasi. Uh, the footage was captured from a house, from this house shown in the pictures below. Uh, the video showcases the violent nature of tsunamis um, in the near field. And it was widely circulated by newspapers and in social media. Um, so these four frames extracted from the footage tell the, the whole story. Within about two minutes after the earthquake, the shoreline retreated significantly. And three minutes after the earthquake, the water level rose to about a meter above sea level. And after this point, a high wave can be seen coming from the east and violently impacting the coastal resident residents about a minute later. It would be impossible for a human to resist this uh, kind of uh, wave impact seen in the video. And while it is difficult to define the maximum water level reached in the video due to the high splash on the facade of the building, it is safe to say uh, that run-up in these locations is about three meters above mean sea level. Uh, the very short arrival time of the wave, uh, leaving no time for effective tsunami warning, and the violent impact of the wave um, seen in the video highlight the grave need uh, for tsunami education and preparedness. Uh, we need to pass the uh, all important message along uh, that if you are near the coast and you happen to experience a long lasting shaking, or if you see the sea behaving strangely, you need to move to higher ground immediately. Uh, I would like to pass the floor to, to Gune to present her results for the Turkish coastline. Um, thank you, Dr. Kaligeris. Um. Okay, I hope my screen is okay. Um, sorry, let me go to the first slide. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I will now shortly our post tsunami field observations along Izmir coast in Turkey. Um, first, I would like to acknowledge the following institutions and individuals for their invaluable support, which made us uh, quickly perform the field surveys under difficult pandemic conditions. And I would like to first highlight the importance of post tsunami field surveys to describe and document the regional effects and tsunami parameters, as well as the human response and awareness level uh, to contribute to tsunami risk reduction and to achieve a successful implementation of mitigation and other management measures. Uh, the 30th of October tsunami arriving the nearest coast within 10 to 20 minutes was another reminder of the tsunami threat in the Eastern Aegean after 2017 Bodrum Coast events. Unfortunately, this tsunami resulted in one casualty in Sajik district of Izmir, as well as several injured people and significant damage to uh, marine vessels and property laws in Izmir coast. So we performed two, two uh, different post-event field surveys. One was a very quick survey on the days just following the earthquake to acquire data before perishing. And another survey was a few days later uh, for more detailed measurements and investigation. Uh, my presentation consists of a lot of figures and photos, uh, which may be tiring sometimes, my apologies for this. Here on the left figure, uh, you see the major effect, sorry. 
here on the left figure, uh, you see the major affected area. Here is the Izmir metropolitan area and the main coastal districts uh, of Izmir coast. And here on the right figure, you see the, uh, this area in uh, more focusing on Kushadasa Bay and uh, you see the area uh, the surveyed coastline extending from Alicet to here in the north and to Gimudu region in the south. We performed measurements and eyewitness interviews at more than 120 points uh, at eight different localities along the affected Turkish coast. Uh, we followed the conventional methods described in the UNESCO IOC Post Tsunami Field Survey Guide to perform our measurements, which include uh, flow depth, tsunami height, uh, run up, and inundation distance. And we adopted the same terminology to present our field data. If we start from the north in Alacheta locality, there's a stream called uh, Alacheta Azmak in Turkish, where our maximum tsunami penetration was nearly 2.5 kilometers uh, up to this point, and overflowing the bridge. Uh, shown here in this picture, which is located here. And the tsunami inundation mainly followed this Asmak stream bed and the flat coastal topography around, uh, shown with the blue line. And a boat was dragged about 1.1 kilometers along the stream up to this location you see in these figures from its original location in the fishery port here. In the Alicet Fisher Port, the maximum inundation distance was 72 meters with a run-up of one meter, and the flow that was measured as 0.9 meters in Port Alicet Marina here, where the inundation was again uh, 73 meters. When we analyzed these security video recordings at Port Alicete houses, which were also affected by the tsunami in Alicete, we've seen that the sea first receded up to a depth of 1.5 meters. Here you see some indications uh, of this 28 minutes after the earthquake. And the first positive wave arrived about seven minutes later uh, as the water level increased, uh, increased to 1.7 meters and flooded all this area here. Moving towards the east, Zeytinili was significantly impacted by the tsunami where long, long tsunami penetration was observed from the stream again, Zeytinili Azmak in this case. The tsunami inundation zone again mainly followed the stream bed and the surrounding low-lying um, flat topography as there are steep slopes on both sides. You can also see in this panoramic view. We also observed significant damage in Zeytinili fishery shelter as all of the boats were destroyed and became unusable, requiring a complete reconstruction. Uh, the abandoned summer houses along the shore were also severely damaged and debris accumulated on both outer walls and inside. Here we measured the flow depth as 1.5 meters. In addition, um, we found concrete blocks on the shore weighing approximately one ton each, uh, which were dragged about 25 meters inland and scattered by the tsunami all over here uh, from their original locations shown with the yellow line um, on this upper left uh, inset map. Demircili is an interesting survey location um, as the tsunami impact was quite different in the northwestern and southeastern parts of the coastline. Only small inundation of 45 meters was measured on the, south, uh, on the northwestern side of the coast, as you see here with the uh, red dashed line. On the other hand, considerable damage was observed uh, by the local people and the fishers uh, on this narrow beach uh, on the southeastern side of the bay, as you can see from the damaged photos uh, here. Sajuk as a low-lying bay-shaped area um, uh, with several local stream beds uh, here you see with the yellow dash lines um, was the most impacted area of the tsunami coast affected coastline. We observed significant damage in Teos Marina, which is shown here, and Kalechi region, which are a important coastal facilities in Sajuk. Uh, the, the tsunami penetrates 210 meters from the uh, stream bed here and flooded the surrounding area. And uh, we observed that the maximum inundation occurred in the most low-lying area here. We measured the maximum inundation here 415 meters. And uh, the inundation here caused significant damage to properties, to houses, and uh, leaving injured locals um, who hardly survived the tsunami. Here we see the tsunami traces on the left uh, on the garden fence of Teos Marina and heavily damaged cafes and shops in Kalechi region. Uh, we observed many of them during our survey in Kalechi. 
When we move to Akarja further southeast, we observe highly localized tsunami effects in the central bay shown here, uh, with significant damage to the fishery shelter and Seferi Star diving center here, but a significant re reduction of the tsunami impact in the northwest and southeast directions. We found the maximum runup among all surveyed locations in Akarja and measured 3.82 meters at a distance of 91 meters inland, and the maximum inundation in the central bay was uh, 285 meters. Here you see a drag boat uh, found at a distance of 90 meters from the shore in Akarta and destroyed garden walls of a shore facing house here on the right uh, where we measured about 1.9 meters tsunami splash height and in the diving center here on, uh, you see on the upper photos the founder of this diving center told us that he was drifted uh, by the incoming wave to inland about 200 meters on a sofa and he barely survived the tsunami as a diver. Further southeast, there was an overall decrease in the tsunami impact in Tepejik uh, in comparison with Akarja, with continuing impact degrees uh, to the southeastern direction. Only minor tsunami impact was observed in Gümüldür, which was mainly limited to narrow beach areas. And the inundation distances here ranged between 15 to 25 meters uh, in Gümüldür. And here you see some sweet deposits um, found in Tepejik, and the impact was limited to these small areas. We also investigated the tsunami damage to coastal structures and port facilities in the surveyed coastline. In Sajik Teos Marina, high damage was observed, as I said before. Four piers uh, out of six composed of uh, floating pontoons were displaced, and more than 320 boats were moved. Some of them sank, and some were moved outside by the uh, outside the marina by the tsunami. And the marina experienced about five hours lasting um, large period oscillations with an amplitude of 70 centimeters, as stated by the general manager. And 20 minutes after the earthquake, the incoming waves caused strong current velocities and eddies inside the marina. Strong storm currents broke, broke the moorings and the pontoons were dragged and detached in Teos Marina. And uh, the detached pontoons were moved to other locations. Uh, the ropes and chains were broken off and the moored ships were damaged. The small fishery port in Akarja also suffered substantial damage. All of the floating piers and many seafront facilities uh, see he, in here were destroyed and uh, became unusable, as you can see uh, in these photos um, taken during our survey. More than 20 boats were sunk at this location, uh, as reported by the, uh, fish, uh, the fishery cooperative officials here. We also observed severe damage at another small fisher shelter in Zeytinli locality. The poorly engineered mooring and berthing structures and all of the boats in the shelter again were destroyed and became unusable, requiring a complete reconstruction. Uh, the cars parked close to the shore were drifted to the sea here, and the boats and these cars also required rescue operations, and we observed some of these uh, operations during our survey. In summary, according to our findings, the most impacted areas were the Itzneli, Sajik, and Akarja, about uh, 30 kilometers north from the epicenter. And our findings reveal a significant amplific amplification of the tsunami in small bays with narrow entrances, resulting in highly localized tsunami effects. The local streams, which exist in almost all uh, surveyed locations, uh, caused further tsunami inundation at the surrounding low-lying areas. And the tsunami impact highly decreased um, between Tepecik and Gümüldür, and almost no, no significant inundation or other indication uh, was observed beyond Gümüldür to further southeast. We also observed severe damage on especially poorly engineered structures, such as fisheries shelters and small seafront facilities. And uh, I would like to note that another important survey finding was the remarkable increase in the tsunami awareness uh, of the people in the area, uh, where it was extremely low in the 2017 Bodrum Coast events. Um, we also performed some numerical modeling applications of the 30th of October tsunami event. Here you see the two animations of these uh, hydrodynamic simulations in Kushadasa Bay on the left and focusing on Sajik and Akarja regions on the right. Uh, the wave has already started to propagate from here. And uh, here, blue color represents the negative and the red color represents the positive wave amplitude. As you can see animation uh, focusing on Sajik and Akarja here, we can clearly demonstrate the significant amplification and uh, inundation, especially in Sajik uh, and Teos Marina here. Um, 
Now I would like to leave the stage to Dr. Caligaris again to further continue on the numerical modeling part. And thank you very much for listening, especially to the attendants from the USA where the time is very early morning and special thanks to the organizers. Uh, Dr. Caligaris. Thank you, Yune. Um, so I will be presenting uh, tsunami simulation results using the most hydrodynamic, hydrodynamic model developed by Tito Finishon Lex in 95 and 98, uh, like NAMI dance, uh, for which um, Guinea just presented uh, the animations, uh, the NAMI dance model that was used in the animation by Guinea just now. Uh, most also solves the nonlinear shallow water equations. Uh, the initial conditions that were used uh, with both um, models uh, are, so the initial conditions used with both models are common and they correspond to the uniform slip model of Ganas et al. that was published in Templar soon after the earthquake. Uh, the source is modeled uh, using an almost uh, north dipping 36 by 18 kilometer fold uh, rupture area and 1.8 meters of slip magnitude. And the figure here shows the maximum wave amplitude distribution predicted uh, by the model across the Aegean Sea. You can see that the uh, most wave energy is directed towards the Turkish Aegean coast around Sigacik and the north coast of Samos Island, which is where the uh, observed tsunami impact was the highest. Uh, tsunami energy is also directed towards um, the southeast coast of Hios Island, as well as Furnia and Icaria, which explains the wave run up um, and inundation observed there. Uh, we also compare the simulation results of both numerical models to the four nearest tide gauges uh, for which records are available, namely the Ciros, um, Plomaricos, and Bodrum tide gauges indicated with the circles here. Uh, for the Ciros tide gauge, uh, where the waves arrived first, there is a difference between the model and the recorded uh, wave arrival time. Uh, this uh, also, uh, this is something that we're looking into why this happened. Uh, because of this mismatch in the, in the timing, there's also a mismatch with the wave facing and also the maximum amplitude recorded um, for the second wave wasn't captured by either model. Uh, however, overall, the model amplitudes are consistent with the, the recording. Uh, the model recording comparison is, um, is better for the other three tide gauge records, uh, perhaps with the uh, exception of course, <laughs> record where only the long wave component is captured by the models and the models miss the higher frequency component, the source of which uh, has not been identified yet. Um, we also performed a high resolution uh, tsunami simulation for the town of uh, Vathi in Samos. This map shows the maximum wave amplitude predicted by the model in the Bay of Vathi and also the predicted tsunami inundation extent. The gray bars on the uh, side, uh, uh, bottom and top, uh, show the maximum predicted tsunami elevation along the coast. Uh, overall, the model captures the highest uh, run-up areas that we also observed in the field. Um, but, um, and, and it also captures the decay of uh, the wave amplitude as we move away from Vathi uh, towards the entrance of the bay. For example, this beach here of Gaku, we have also measured a run-up of uh, around a meter, which is also reflected in the gray, gray bar above it. Um, the problem is that- uh, Professor Sinilakis and Professor Caligaris, uh, yes. we this are running time. out of time. Okay, All right. Thank you. <laughs> um, however, the, the model predicts wave inundation in parts of the town that they did not flood. This is because the seawall was not properly resolved in the relief. And in terms of the timing of the flood events predicted by the model, the first two flood events, the timing is matched in the model, which, uh, shows that the proximity to the source is accurately represented in the source. However, the model doesn't predict the second bigger flood than, uh, compared to the first, uh, which is something we need to examine in the near future. Also in terms of other future work considerations, we'd like to e examine in more detail the effect of the storm drains had on, on flooding, which is a process that was not resolved in the model. Thank you for your attention and our apologies for ex going Thank out. Thank you very much. Uh Dr. Calgaris, um, we don't have... 
It seems that we've lost uh, Professor Shinolakis. Nikos, can you please take over, or Professor Yeltsinar? Okay, we have two questions. One of them uh, is the tsunami runoff consistent with magnitude. Yes, uh, the results uh, are consistent with the, the either from observations uh, or uh, from modeling. Uh, Nikos, can you answer the second question? Uh, Okay, the, yeah, the, the second question is uh, for myself and for uh, Mrs. Dugan. Um, the question is, are coastal protection infrastructure projects currently planned in the coastal areas that can be affected by tsunamis on Greek islands, and parenthesis Samos, and the Turkish coast? Have the building codes regarding coastal structures have uh, been updated recently? And thank you very much. Um, so, uh, as as far as I'm aware, there are no coastal protection infrastructure projects currently planned uh, that address uh, tsunamis, at least for the Greek side. Uh, I would uh, guess this is also the case for Turkey, Professor Yalçin. Uh, in Turkey, uh, there is 2016 built uh, coastal structures code, uh, which includes parts B. Uh, some guidelines for the design of the structures against tsunamis, but uh, it must be improved. Uh, there is an initiation from Turkish side. Kostas, your turn again, with moderation. Okay, we do not have any questions in the Q&A. Uh, another one came in. Two minutes. Uh, the, the last question it is- came in, I did would the more heterodynamic rupture slip explain the patchy tsunami run up heights at the northern coast uh, of Samos? Uh, yes, uh, this question is put on, and uh, this is certainly something that would affect um, uh, the run up distribution on the north coast. So we are eagerly waiting for the variable slip sources to try these models and see uh, whether they can explain the, the patchy run up uh, values that we measured on the north coast of Samos. Maybe I can add uh, just one sentence. Uh, on the arrival time of the tsunami waves to the Turkish coast, we have some um, disagreements uh, with the model and the observations, and maybe a heterogeneous distribution may have this uh, on this issue also. Thank you. Okay, if we have no more uh, questions. I think we can pass the baton to the next uh, to the next session. Uh, thank you very much uh, to both speakers for this very very uh, intriguing presentation. Clearly, the, there is a big mystery here, and the big mystery is the size of the second wave and why it's larger. Uh, so this is uh, we're going to have uh, we have our work cut out for us as a tsunami community. <laughs>